Greetings and blessed day to you once again, people of God, is the revelator once again. And hoping the grace and mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ is with you until the end of time. Now, before we enter into today's classic, I just want to give you a brief recap of what we covered last time. Last time, we reflected on the second segment, which was now the part two of the pulpit lies. And we explained quite a number of exposures that consist of the false preachers, the false teachers, and the dimensions that come with many diversities of the false gospel that is being preached on the pulpit. And we explained also about the giants, which was now part three. We explained about the lost and the fallen kingdom. Today, I've come with a very unique presentation. A presentation that I was waiting for the Lord to allow me to present. A presentation that the Lord has inspired me. And it is time for me to present that presentation, which will be inside the realms and dimensions series and today we want to focus on the generals of god in the spirit and the generals of god in the spirit that we are going to be focusing on we are going to be focusing on those that now reign in the spirit dimension and inside this presentation is going to be inside the part five of the realms and dimensions and this will be titled the custodians of realms and dimensions in the spirit which will now be the part five segment so child of god i'm hoping that you give the holy spirit a listening ear and also pray that the Holy Spirit allows you to get the full explanation of the word that is going to be preached. And also that the Holy Spirit is going to allow the flexibility of your mind, your meditation, to be enabled to understand the reference and the relevance of the word. Before I present, I just want to pray for you. And also as I will be praying for you, I'll be also praying that the Lord gives me the adequate knowledge and the wisdom to present this presentation which honors the generals of god that reign in the spirit that live forever father in the name of jesus i pray for your children i pray for those that heed to your weight those that hear your weight let them be filled by the spirit of revelation let them be filled by the spirit of the holy ghost so that when they hear unto your word they shall abide by your word and they shall understand it in the name of jesus i want to take you into the custodian of realms and dimensions which is now the part five and inside the part five we are now focusing on the generals of God in the spirit dimensions. God has unleashed different creative and great men of God who have operated both in this time and those that have operated before this time and their works have not only been written in the Holy Bible but their works are evident in the spirit that they walked with God. They sacrificed their lives for God. I'm not going to be going through all of them, but I'm just going to touch on those generals that are the spiritual iconics. I'll go first to the book of Genesis and look at the general of god who was not a prophet he was not a pastor but 
an extraordinary being that was called Adam, who was created by God, whom the Holy Spirit, the Father and the Son, they gather and say, let us make men in our own image. And there is a manifestation of a man who was not just ordinary, but a man that was extraordinary. So many people, they ask, ask me, was Adam the first to be created? What is special about Adam? Were there not any other people that were created? The significance of Adam and the reference that symbolizes the uniqueness of Adam was that Adam was created in the image of God, in the likeness of God, in the creative abilities of God. Adam is able to name all the animals, all the animals that were in the garden, which are all the animals that surround us today. This is the way before the sin. So I'm defining the perfect Adam, the first creation, the one that has got the capability to name each and every animal. And each and every animal that he named, it was signified according to the inspiration of God. I'm talking about an Adam who is able to recreate himself. And Eve is created not from the mud, not from the dust of the earth, but he is created from out of Adam, from within Adam. So we are not talking about an ordinary creature when we talk about Adam. We are talking about one that would hear the footsteps of God walking in the garden. We are talking about one that heard God clearly. One that would hold a conversation with God. And I take you to another general of God who is Noah. Noah who found favor in the sight of the Lord. And a flood is about to come. And he becomes the only righteous man who is prepared to build an ark before the storm comes, before the flood comes. It takes a level of righteousness for one to build an ark. Why list there is dryness? Why list there are no rains? Why list there is not even a single cloud that shows that there is going to be any rains? And Noah surpasses even that level. He goes to the level of gathering all the animals in pairs. And it takes a certain level of meditation, excellence, and intelligence for one to gather all the animals. What it means is that the abilities that were inside Noah, they were so creative. If he was able to, to draw each and every animal, every insect, every reptile in pairs, and gather them all inside the ark and be able to meditate and premeditate before the floods came and he is able to save a generation of God that then multiplied then I take you unto Abraham Abraham the father of all nations I hear so many people trying to liken spiritual father with statuses before and after Abraham, Abraham was not a spiritual father. Abraham was given an honor, an honor of being the father of all nations. You can imagine one that is prepared to sacrifice his own son after having lived for decades in barrenness and he is told, go and present your son as an offering and he does not question God we are talking about one that is told go to a certain land go to a certain destination which he did not even know about and he rises from where he was and he just follows the voice out of faith we are talking about Abraham the father of all nations one that was able 
to stand in the presence of God and negotiate with God before Sodom and Gomorrah was struck. He was able to bargain with God until God reaches a level of calling Abraham his best friend, his friend. And let's go to Isaac, the son of Abraham. One that shocked the Philistines. One that was able to dig up all the wells of his father Abraham during the times of dryness, during the times of drought. And he was able to yield a hundredfold during a time of drought. Isaac was a man, a man with the presence of God, a man that walked after his father Abraham. Isaac was a man whom God had honored after his father Abraham. Then, then we go to Jacob. Jacob who slept and laid his head on the stone and called a place Bethel and had a vision and saw the angels of God going up and down the ladder. Jacob who took all necessities in the spirit to get a blessing to the level of wrestling with an angel of the Lord. After getting a parental blessing, he understood that a parental blessing was not enough until he received a blessing of the Lord to the level that he wrestles with an angel of the Lord. Then I take you to Joseph. Joseph, a young man who was last born in his family, but he carried multiple gifts. And his father Jacob gave him a coat of many colors. And the coat of many colors signified and it resembled the uniqueness of the gifts of the spirit that he had. And Joseph is given the abilities of interpreting dreams. He is able to deliver the nation of Egypt. But as he is part of that Egypt, way before he sits on the throne, he delivers the nation of Egypt through his spiritual interpretation of dreams. He goes through trials, tests, and temptations which put him inside prison, though he was innocent. Joseph is able to be an administrator after interpreting dreams, after predicting the economy in Egypt. He's not only able to deliver the nation of Egypt through his spirit of interpretation of dreams, but he is also able to deliver his own family and his own brothers that sold him out. Then we go to Gideon, a man of valor, a mighty man who wrestles with the armies with only a 300 men. Gideon who builds an altar of the Lord. Gideon, a mighty man who believed in God who fought the armies of, for the armies of Israel, who fought on behalf of the armies of Israel and fought the wars of God as an army man. Then we go to David, the man whom God defines as the man by God's own heart, the man after God's own heart, the man who was principled, the king who was anointed, David is anointed, but before he is, he is even anointed, the wisdom that is inside David is that even after defeating Goliath, he goes into the king's court and starts serving King Saul. And even though he knew that he was going to be king, he does not fight King Saul, but rather he serves King Saul in the palace. He delivers King Saul playing the harp with the strings that were anointed. King David never lost 
a bakery. Why? Because he fought all his bakeries, principled, and knowing that every bakery that he fought, it was a bakery that was fought by God himself. Then we go to King Solomon. King Solomon, the son of David, one that was rich, not only rich in the material, but rich in the spirit. We are not talking about the riches that are just material without the presence of God. We are talking about one that built a temple for the Lord. One in whom the Lord asked, what shall I do for you? And instead of asking for riches, he only asked for wisdom. King Solomon, one that wrote one of the wisest books in the Bible, which is the book of Ecclesiastes. The books that inspire many diversities of wisdom. The book that inspires many dimensions of wisdom. Then we go to Samson. Samson, one of the judges. One of the judges that had been elected by God. The judge that was given the demonstration of power in the times of old. Samson is able to defeat a thousand soldiers on Mount Lehi, singly and daily. Samson is able to deliver the nation of Israel as a judge. He is able to fight the Philistine armies only as a guardian, as a singly and a key representative of heaven and he stands for Israel even up until his death at the time of his death Samson is able to defeat even the Philistines at a very point of time when his eyesight was now shut down when he was now blind but still he is able to pursue the mission of God at one time he lifts up and pulls the gates of Gaza and he climbs up the mountain just to demonstrate the power of God. Then we go to jail, an army man that was anointed by Elijah through Elisha. I'm talking about an army man that defeats the spirit of harlotry. He defeats the spirit of Jezebel, the spirit that had taken over the nation of God and had taken over the prophets and had taken over the kings. We are talking about an army man that was filled with the Holy Spirit. The man that was spirit, spirit filled. And he, he destroyed everything as an army man. It's not most army men that you hear about, except for Jehu, who represented the armies of heaven, who represented the army of God, who represented the armies of Israel. Then we go to Daniel. Daniel, a man who was of excellence and intelligence in the spirit, a man that was able to predict the future, a man that was able to interpret letters, a man that was able to interpret languages, a man that was able to stand as a guardian on behalf of principalities and powers, at one time, he prays until powers and principalities are fighting in the spirit. Up until angel Michael descends. Up until angel Gabriel descends with a message. We are talking about Daniel, a man that was given multiple abilities of the spirit by the heavens. Then we talk about Elijah. Elijah, a man that was taken by the whirlwind by the horses of fire one that was able not to wait for death to consume this body to consume this flesh but god sends the whirlwind that was accompanied with the horses and the chariots of fire elijah was able to anoint elisha through a jacket he was able to leave the whole assignment inside a jacket. Imagine, Elijah was able to release a double portion of not only his anointed anointing, but his own spirit. We are talking about a man that stood in the firm realms of the spirit and represented God. We talk about Moses, another general in the spirit. 
one that is the breaking the foundation of all prophets that reigned in the old testament one that crossed the red sea one that was able to cross the red sea in the middle of the sea and there was a dry land that was opened we are talking about one that stood in the presence of god and spoke to god face to face god said of all the prophets moses i speak unto him face to face meaning that moses spoke to god at another level that was unique that was different than the level that god spoke with all the other prophets we're talking about one that proclaimed and demonstrated several miracles for the children of israel to be delivered out of the land of bondage we talk about john the baptist whom jesus defines saying of all that have lived one that is the greatest of all that has come out of the womb of a woman it was john the baptist yet when we read about john the baptist we don't see much of the miracles that were done by john the baptist but there is a level of life that was lived by john the baptist and the life that was lived by john the baptist it was spirit filled it was a life where he lived only for the sake of the word he was a forerunner of jesus christ john the baptist lived his life only for the sake of the way to the level that the scriptures say that he ate locusts and wild honey he was one that never lived for the bread never lived for the wine he lived a righteous life a life only for christ and jesus hails him and says of all that were born of a woman is john the baptist and of all the prophets all the prophets prophesied until john the baptist and of all john the baptist is greater than all the prophets then i talk about apostle paul one preacher in the new testament that lived for the sake of the gospel who suffered for the gospel who was imprisoned for the gospel who was beaten up for the gospel who suffered many stripes for the gospel shipwrecked in the middle of the sea for the gospel stung by the viper by it lived performed the miracles signs and wonders for the gospel then the apostles of jesus christ the 12 disciples i cannot mention all of them but on behalf of all of them i mentioned john the revelator john the revelator who operated in his own dimensions the one that writes most of the books in the new testament who writes the books of revelations all the 22 chapters he writes about events that are yet to come the events that are yet to unfold john the revelator the only disciple that remained behind when all the disciples of christ had been persecuted had been killed it suffered many things john the revelator on whom upon the spirit of john the baptist the spirit of elijah he had rested upon then i go upon him that reigns the one in whom the scriptures had always prophesied the one in whom the prophets prophesied about the one in whom all the generals the one in whom all the generals of god lived for the one in whom the, all the prophets prophesied for the one in whom they prophesied saying the messiah is coming i'm talking about jesus one that is more than a general one that anointed the generals one that anointed the prophets one that anointed i samuel the revelator that is preaching one that anointed even the generals of this time i cannot count the generals that have lived in this time the generals the likes of tp joshua in this time the generals the likes of reniard bonky the generals of god of this time that lived in this time and they did the mighty works child of god i'm here to present the custodians 
of realms and dimensions in this part five and i'm here to proclaim the spirit of all those dimensions the spirit of all the generals that surpassed all the dimensions the generals that reign in the realms of the spirit in the name of jesus